One of the big puzzles that we're only starting to understand is why in this current day and age we are working still very approximately the same hours as people were working 100 years ago. We've got fantastic technology now. We've got computers, we've got machines that will do the work of many individuals. And yet this hasn't reduced the amount of work that we do. So now, since the pandemic, people's imagination about how the world of work might be different has changed fundamentally. We're using our imaginations to think things could be very different. Why have we continued to work in the way we do? And what do we need to fix it? Keeping people involved in the labour market is a very important part of an inclusive society. So the idea that we all stay in work, but working shorter hours, to me, is a very positive view of the future. I'm confident that a society where we spend less time in paid work and more time doing all sorts of other things, it would be so much nicer a society for individuals and for the planet too. I've been thinking about work and why it's good for you for many decades now. One thing we should always ask, when anyone tells you that something's good for you, you should ask the question, how much do I need? What's enough? What's too much? And when I started asking those questions about paid employment, nobody could provide me with an answer, to my great surprise. That was the question I started to ask. And the answer was a big surprise. We did a lot of number crunching, we spoke to a lot of people, and we found that Sure enough, those people who are outside of the labour market, their well-being tend to be much lower. But when we looked at people inside the labour market, you only need to work one day a week to get all the benefits of mental health. Awesome! Anything more than that, and there are good reasons you might want to work more than one day a week, you didn't get any additional benefit from it. We call it a four-day week, but actually it could be many different things. It could be that everybody stops at work a couple of hours earlier each day, some organisations, everybody has Friday off, others rotate it through the week. But this is the biggest trial that's ever been mounted, where all of the participating organisations have this clear 20% reduction in working time. The organisations we've been working with so far tend to be in the private sector, but across a whole range. Lots of white-collar jobs, computer programmers, architects, we've got shops, we've got a fish and chip shop, uh, we've got a school. We've got service providers, quite a big range, but we need to expand beyond that. Productivity is one of the most difficult things to measure, particularly for each individual. What we've done in the project is asked each organisation what's important for them, whether it's making a profit or seeing a certain number of customers each week, providing a certain quality of service. And that's what we've been monitoring throughout this trial to see whether they have maintained that same level of performance. And overwhelmingly they have, I mean there have been hitches, I'm not saying there haven't been hitches, but overwhelmingly they did manage to achieve that. Some economists said that was going to be impossible to get that increase in productivity to offset a 20% reduction in working time. We seem to have achieved it. So how did people manage to get the same amount done in four days as they'd done previously in five? There are all sorts of ways in which employees were very keen to find efficiency gains themselves. A very common story was that they used to have long meetings that weren't benefiting people and there were too many people in those meetings and they've found out new ways of communicating or having much shorter meetings and they're actually enjoying those meetings while people weren't enjoying wasting time at work. If we look at the great social thinkers over the past 100, 150 years, like Marx, like Keynes, who got most things right about the way the world was going, one thing that they both seem to have got wrong is that there was going to be a natural reduction in working time with technology, whether it was coming from employees or employers. It clearly hasn't happened. The interesting thing in this project is when people hear that they're going to have to reduce their working time but keep the same productivity, that's when they start to look for technology. They look for software that's going to help them make themselves more productive, waste less time. So it's actually by bringing about working time reduction, we increase the take up of technology. That was something we hadn't expected at all and, and really one of the most interesting things to come out of this project. There's lots of ways in which we're going to judge the success or failure of this. Probably the single biggest thing is seeing whether those organisations continue to work as a four-day week after the trial. Social scientists shouldn't predict the future because they always get it wrong. But I do think it's highly likely that the four-day week 
or people working much shorter hours each week is going to become the norm. When we ask employers, a lot of them are convinced it's going to happen. The thing that's been different about this project for me is I've been talking to people who have seen these massive benefits and it's been uplifting to me just talking to so many happy people over the last six months. When people can see the re very real way in which they could benefit from these changes, they are swayed by it. It's almost too good to be true, but it's not too good to be true. This is a change we can bring about, we can bring about it quickly. And I think just have such a better working life and family life for so many people.